Hello everybody, this is a follow-up to my grading of Worksheet 3.1. Uh, that was on social statuses, uh, on roles, statuses, and the concept of roles, strain, and concept of role conflict. I want to go over this with you. Uh, first, I'm going to share the rubric. That's going to be the first thing I'll do. The second thing I'm going to do is provide you two very succinct yet excellent examples uh, from your fellow students about how um, how to do uh, this particular assignment. Uh, and then three, a, a couple of reminders about some, some issues or problems. The purpose of this worksheet is going to help us to understand what statuses and roles are and how they uh, reflect. This ties into milestone two. Uh, a lot of folks um, read you know or ask me about milestone two please read the rubric and read the elements and then review so far we're working on inequality this week so and you answer the following questions in the module three worksheet three different statuses ascribed or achieved the role expectations one example of role conflict one example of role strain one example of a status that might be subject to social inequality. For example, mothers tend to make less money in the workplace. All right. Here is what a perfect notice of what this is here. And I'll talk a little bit about the breakdown of this. First off, let's look at Love Walker. What I consider to be, you know, a perfect job on it. It wasn't long. It wasn't now. She didn't use the worksheet, but some people write paragraphs. And some people use the, the worksheet to, to, to break it up. Either way is fine. So the format here, what I'm, um, what I'm focusing on, it's the content. So what did she do? First off, correctly identify three statuses. She identified them, mother, daughter, student. But they achieved or ascribed. Some people, most people got this. Some people had some rather odd interpretations of what ascription is. Okay, but her status, uh, you know, she had her status as a daughter is a scribe. And a scribe status is something that is involuntarily taken on, or it might be, it might be, I, I won't say forced, but, but it's something for which we have no choice. I mean, I'm a white male, 63-year-old, okay? There are only two possible, and, and people got into, well, we'll talk about it in a minute, but she did a good job of identifying there. She talked about her role expectations for being a mother, a daughter, okay, uh, and a student, okay. Basically, summarizing in, in very succinct fashion of these statuses. And she summarizes the status, but she, she, a role is a bit with a status, okay. Now, here's where it gets critical. An example of role conflict, she says, is deciding what's best for my kids and disregarding what my parents decide I should do regarding my kids. Why is that a role conflict? These are two separate and distinct behaviors. The decision that she makes has to make, has to you know, process her parents' material versus uh, what she thinks. This creates a tension between two different statuses that of daughter and that of fundamental okay um you know okay that is a, an example of role conflict they are two different statuses role strain being able to understand my schoolwork turning in my assignments on time and capable of keeping up with again role strain has to do with tensions associated with behaviors for a specific one status, right? Not two, but one. In this case, Rashida did a very succinct job of telling me that, uh, you know, the, the strains that occur with a single status of being a student, okay? As opposed to the role conflict the strain that occurs between her status as a daughter and her status, okay, she talked about inequalities, and then she provides a pretty solid 
reference here. She didn't just grab this reference. I mean, I've seen some pretty strange things. I mean, somebody wrote, wrote me about swimming pools and then had a Holocaust reference. Mm, I don't think so. This, this is clear that not only is it, you know, she's provided a reference. She has grounded her observations in, you know, her, uh, you know, her appropriation of the lit, what the literature has to say about this. This is a paper that gets you full credit. It got, it checked all the boxes. I go down, I use that rubric when I grade. I, you know, it's succinct, it's to the point, and it demonstrated Rashida's command of this concept of status and role. Congratulations, Rashida. Excellent paper. Now, I want to, um, to give you another, and this was from Felicia. Um, Felicia, um, y you know, okay, uh, she's a mother, a wife, and a student. Okay, now... Again, she hits all the points. She identifies um, your statuses. She correctly identifies mother, wife, and student as achieved statuses versus a scribe. And a scribe say this is something that we involuntarily have. It doesn't involve somebody... Well, there have been some strange interpretations of this, which I'll talk about in a moment when I talk about but then we have another excellent thing. She, she described her, uh, you know, the role expectations pretty straightforwardly. Then here's the thing, and this is where m most people make some sort of an error. Again, role conflict. When a mother is a student and she needs to study, but her child's sick, that is a classic of role conflict. A wife having communic, uh, okay, role, uh, and then, okay, so we, you know, I mean, yeah, role conflict, a wife is a student. Or a student who is a wife, and these are okay. Then we get down the role strain again. Each of these are um, are, are examples of tensions associated within a status. So there's a between and a within comparison. And then we have social inequality. So, um, you know, I mean, uh, and then she provides a reference. She links this to uh, the material. She links it back to the chapter. Okay, so let's go back and look at this. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about some problems. So many of you did a fine job of this. Okay, many of you kind of overwrote and you, you, you dug yourself a, a wee bit of a hole and you provided me a partial indication of your understanding of, of a role conflict. I think role conflicts and the role strain, the different ones, Okay, here are a couple of points I need to hammer home with. We are all busy. We all have complicated lives. We all have difficult lives. I understand this. But you must devote for this class and for every class you take here at Southern New Hampshire, you have to give yourself three meaningful hours over the course of 72 hours. I mean, of seven days in a week. So, I'm, I want to do something here. What, what is um, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put um, how many hours? Okay, seven days is twenty four hours. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, there's twenty four hours in a day. There's twenty one hours a day when you're not studying. So you have three hours. So, so, um, what does that mean? Basically, how many minutes is that? Okay, um, it, you know, uh, so uh, you're, you're basically studying um, um, 90 minutes a week, okay? You're study, you, have, you need to devote 90 minutes a week, okay? How do you break that down over the course of a day, over seven days, is, is your call. There are certain deadlines we First of all, second of all, the fact that many of you are not bothering to use references on this worksheet in week three is mirrored in your sort of some of the misunderstandings you have about the material. 
what that indicates to me is that you are not putting these three hours in, or if you're putting them in, you're not reading, you need to read the material, you need to read the module, and I've worked very hard on, on videos that I embed here, right, that'll explain it. So I'm going to make a suggestion, spend the, you know, uh, the, you know, I'll, I'll put up, I'm going to, getting ready to put up week five, since it's Friday, and we're, we're still in week uh, four, okay, uh, you, you know, take some time, read over the material, read over the expect, I'm getting questions that indicate that maybe you're, maybe you need to explore the possibility of spending a little more time reading the material. If you send me, uh, you know, if you're talking about the second milestone and you tell me it doesn't make any sense, you need to go back to the first module where everything is set up and read the rubrics and then read closely the guidelines. All of these concepts, statuses, and the role behaviors associated with it, culture, um, those are things we're in, and you're covering inequality this week, are all things that should tie in to your uh, your concept map, and then in the milestone three, which essentially is a combination of your concept map and, and your paper. These are all, I mean, they're, they're, the, they're the same topic. The milestones, again, are to build your final. These worksheets explore concepts that we're covering. And to that point, you cannot open these assignments and read them and just free freestyle. I call it freestyling. It's kind of like in hip hop, you know, where you just kind of, you, you know, some people can freestyle. You can't do that here. These words have specific meanings. Conflict doesn't just mean you're you're having a tough time at work. That's how we use it in everyday conversation. This is not everyday conversation. This is a class in sociology. So you, you gotta you gotta place this in in a, a context where you're, you can make comparisons between your situation and the situation of millions of people, right? Um, that, that is sociology. It's not just writing your biography in a different form every week. Uh, I see a little of that, and while your biography is important, you need to put it in the context of the, of the social world. So uh, I want to uh, em, you know, emphasize this. Uh, as I move in, I'm getting ready to grade discussion three. Uh, we're coming to Friday. Uh, I'm going to be doing that uh, this afternoon. And then I'd like to get a jump on grading um, your milestone twos early, as early as possible. I may start grading those. Um, I have some time actually over the weekend where I'm going to try to, if you submitted it, I'll get it to you, and if you know if there's a problem with those, as as it, I've indicated with the first milestone, you know, let's work together and try to resolve that so that you can be successful moving forward. You must, for all worksheet, you must use an American psychological style reference, and you have to use even if it's just the textbook. For milestones, I expect more. Please review on your own the, the the criteria for writing the paper, the milestone setup for the for the for the um, the rubric, the milestone rubrics that are included in the first. Week. And for every week, please make sure material read and view the material. Spend three hours a week working on this class. This is not an unreasonable expectation. You need to do that and budget your time for this class and for every class you take. You need to spend three an average. Now, sometimes it's going to be more, sometimes it's going to be less. Uh, I'm again going to send out, I'll send out a, a Zoom a link with an invite, a link, and then there'll be some other information so you can call you don't have access to a web. Um, I'm hoping to do that uh, over the next couple of days and to plan that for early this week. Okay, thanks and have a great week.